we're going to take this tour of a very special place that we're going to share with you with uh, Mr. Jim Polychondriotis. And um, before we do that tour, and his lovely wife Pat's going to take us on that tour, by the way, and um, this has been almost a year in the making. <laughs> it's taken us that long to put this all together for you, but I, I really think you're going to enjoy it. First of all, Jim, thank you so much for uh, letting us in. And uh, we're going to, some of you folks probably know Jim. He, I think at last count, he has talked to and has uh, been with uh, about 1.1 million people, somewhere in that, <laughs> in that territory. Uh, and many of them are um, gathering at, at certain times of the week. What's that donut shop? What's Don the name of that donut shop? The Donut Den. The Donut Den. Oh, or three. All right, okay. <laughs> we want to get them in there because it, it, it's kind of a part of his life these days. Well, let me start. Before we do the tour and take folks out to uh, this special place, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you born and raised here in Joliet? I was born and raised in Joliet in 1930. I was born. 1930. And I heard from the grapevine that as you, uh, as you grew up, you went to uh, a couple of uh, our local schools here. I've got the grapevine news for you in just a minute. What schools did you go to? I went to Hickory School, Cunningham School, Farragut, and JT. All right. JT, was that brand new then? Brand new school? No, that's been there for a while. Yeah. It's still one of the most beautiful high schools anywhere. And the interior of that high school is just astounding. If those kids, if you read in the Herald News, or here on WJOL, or here on Channel 6, any kind of a play or a production, um, you know, just a few weeks ago, they had this uh, fantastic salute to veterans in their theater. And it's just a beautiful school, great kids, wonderful uh, teaching over there. So you you end up, let's see, 1930s, so you're going to end up in World War II. Do you not get involved in that? Not at all. Not I'm at all. The Korean War. The Korean War. Because that's kind of, during that period of time is when you, uh, you meet your today's wife, correct? Did that's you meet correct. Pat? Yeah. Tell, me, tell me that story. <laughs> well, I was in North Africa two and a half years. And on the last two weeks, I went to Fatima in Portugal. And on the way back, I met her sister on a plane, and she asked me all about my girlfriend back home, which I didn't have anymore, because girlfriends don't last very long. And out of sight, out of mind, is out of, not the right way. It's, this didn't happen. So anyhow, her sister said she had another sister, young, she's very young, but she would write me if I wanted some mail. And I said, yeah. Mail is good for everybody. My mom and dad was writing me and I had a couple aunts writing me. And so she started writing me by the time I got home in two weeks. I had 14 letters waiting there. So I decided I really wasn't ready for marriage and she was way too young. I went to a seminary down in Oklahoma. So you wanted to be a priest? Right. I wanted to be a priest because I was taking 125 guys to church every Sunday morning to Mass. And I decided maybe that's what I should keep doing. So I decided to go to a seminary, and then when I got down with her, I went to see Patsy because I just want to thank her for writing me. And when I got to her house, I see this young girl running from one house to another, short shorts, T-shirt, no socks, no shoes. And I rapped on the door, and who come to the door but Patsy? So, one thing led to another, but her mother didn't like me because I was a Yankee no. and I was in the military, and that was bad news. But anyhow, the way things turn out, we ended up together. Yeah, it turned out quite well. How long have you been married? We were married 60 years, May 5th. 60 years. That's fantastic. Wherever Pat is hiding, congratulations to you, Pat. <laughs> she's hiding. You're going to find out where she's going to be because she's going to take us on a tour. The, uh, your family, how many kids in the family? There were five. Five. Any grandchildren? 
Well, I got some. I forget how many, but I got you some. You got a bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll get those the count of the grandchildren when we finish the tour. So when we're about to take this tour now, Jim, um, when did it start and why did you do this? Well, I've been around cars and trucks all my life, even in the military. And I worked before I went to service. I worked in the garage in Joliet, and I worked on my dad's truck earlier than that. And then one thing led to another, and I just wanted to keep on doing it. So I started up when I got out of the military in 55. And I sold a lot of hot rod equipment, and I got a trophy from the city of Joliet for being the first guy in Joliet to sell hot rod equipment and install it. Yeah. Did you ever drive any of these, in any racing? Oh, I used to race all the time and down the streets in Joliet. <laughs> Hank, Hank Solon and me, we got together a lot of times. I had a 57 Olds, and I raced that all the time, up and down Chicago Street, around Joliet. <laughs> Okay. All right. We'll keep that in there. I don't think I think the uh, what the, the statute of limitations is uh, is 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 in effect on that one. Um, of all of the collections that we're about to see, do you have a favorite? I got a favorite. A friend of mine named um, I can't think of his name right now, but he brought me a Model T back from North Dakota. It's got less than 500 miles on it. And I like that the best. Yeah, and we're going to see that one. And uh, if Pat's ready, um, we'll do that. Pat, uh, take us on that tour. This is a polygas pump. Polygas was a very big gas company in southern Illinois, Arkansas, Missouri. And I think they went out of business in the late 50s. And I was fortunate enough to find a, a pump. He's got two of them. And they're very rare. Don't find them, find them very often. I know some of them have been on stages for plays in Chicago, in the Chicago area, but I don't know too much about them. Uh, I think Joyette had four breweries uh, a long time ago, and he's got items from each one. And they're in good shape, you know. Uh, one was uh, Searing and um, Citizens was also one. Porter. And I don't remember the other two. It's okay. Let's see, the name's there, but. He's got a lot of old newspapers. A lot of these were given to him by friends who were afraid their kids were going to throw them in the dumpster when they died, so they gave them to him, and he's been saving them in there. Anyway, the, he was a very big fan of Frank Yankovic, and I think this is a, a picture of Jim when he was playing. Um, when he first bought this car, we had four kids at the time, and they all fit in the back seat. And we used to ride around town in it a lot. We'd go to church in it and come back out, and it was fine, you know. This is a picture of Jefferson and Larkin, the westbound Jefferson and southbound Larkin going that way towards the station. This was in the 50s. This is Jim's dad's farm tractor. and. Jim and his brother would sit in each one of their seats and they'd plant onions and tomatoes and whatever. Okay. This is a brass uh, cash register. I don't know where he got it. This is um, a Corvette that he bought. It's a replica of the car that Colin Powell drove in the 2005 Indy 500 race and it's got his autograph in the back, but it's a replica. I don't know much more about it, except that it's been completely restored by the previous owner. And he's a local gentleman, and uh, his name is Art Di Lorenzo, and he did it all by himself. This is going to be my son-in-law George's car someday. <laughs> he wants it. This one 
was supposed to have been Jimi Hendrix's car, but I'm not sure if it is or not. We don't have the right documents saying it is. <laughs> this is also known as a Chicago typewriter. It's plastic, it isn't real. This is, uh, look at all the places he played. He was in a contest at one time with Dick Contino in Joliet. And he didn't win, but there's a story behind that. This is Rendell's old crew from many years ago. I don't know what year, but I think here's Harry. This is Jim and I almost 59 years ago. It'll be 59 years May 5th. Dad. This was his dad and his mom and dad. His dad was a truck farmer. What was his, what was his mother's maiden name? Franciscovich. Ah. And here's something interesting. Oh, I can't I it. It. A dubious first in the county? Yes. John Whiteside wrote about it a couple of times. Go ahead and tell him about she that. This is about Jim's grandmother, Mary Franciscovich. In 1924, she was the first Will County automobile fatality. And a, a little girl died along with her, but she died later. They were on their way to Rivals Park, walking alongside the street. And a man was drunk and ran into him, and he killed her. She left five kids. She had to quit school and stay home and take care of the kids, do the washing, the housework, and everything. The gentleman, the man who, who ran into them got nine months in jail. This house is now a dentist's office next to the old Howard Johnson's. That's where yeah. my dad... By the airport. Right? Yeah. Between the airport and... It used to be Howard Johnson's. I don't know what the heck it is now. I forgot glasses. how old Dad was, maybe seven, when they went to the, it was at the Mode, and Shirley Temple's movie was playing, and she was there advertising some milk, and my dad was in the front row, and she came down and handed him a glass of milk for advertisement. I, yeah, that's what I, that's what he was, that's what he told us always, but that's how he met Shirley Temple. Picture of the old Honey Otis store. With, with the brothers. Yeah. And these are the Honey Otis boys. Seven years ago, we went to Mykonos, and someone found the house that his dad was born in. And this is all that's left of it. This is a picture of Art DiLorenzo. Um, he was in World War II and he was in uh, France during the time of Normandy. And uh, he's the one that had that, that remodel, I mean that uh, rebuild that Model T. Babe Ruth came to St. Joe's Park. Don't know what year, but uh, this young man right here is a Marshall from Joliet. I'm not sure, but I think this is Mr. Ambrose's helmet. Oh, Joe Ambrose. Joe Ambrose. He used to march in all the parades in Joliet. Mm -hmm. This is an, a uniform like Audie Murphy wore, and I think it's got the same medals, or not the medals, but the, that he's, the ribbons that he had. They just made very few. I think they made less than 10. And I think they did it and um, put them together in Buffalo, New York, and then they stopped making them. There are very few left. There are milk bottles from a lot of the dairies that w was around uh, Joliet. Tops was is now Shalino Cheese, okay. but it was a dairy at one time. It, they were on Bennett Street, I think, on the wow. east side of town, alongside 80. Sure. Wow. Jeez. And Meadow Goal and uh, wow. yeah. Weber's. Yeah, just take it. 
Did you ever hear of Rainer Park Dairy? This is Jim's brother Ted standing in front, running uh, alongside the car they had out in Shorewood. This is a picture of Jim playing the accordion when he was stationed in North Africa. He's so dark you can only see the white of his teeth and the accordion. And these came from someplace in Joliet. They made candy. This is Jim's dad with his brother who came over from Greece for a visit. The guy who bought this truck, um, he bought it and he he had it for a little while and then they came out with hydraulic, what is it, hydraulic brakes. So he decided he'd rather have the hydraulic brakes and he put this in his garage or whatever and got one with hydraulic. Then finally he decided to sell this one and then since then he's approached my dad trying to get it back but my dad said no. 600, 600 miles. We went to a car show many years oh, ago uh, in Montgomery, I think, and the man had a for sale sign on it. Jim wasn't interested because he only liked Model A's and Model T's. He asked him how much he wanted and why he was selling it. He says, I don't know, but if I don't sell it today, I'm going to take it home and make a hot rod out of it. And that made Jim sick to think yeah. that he was going to take it, yeah. you know, and do something like that with it. So the next day he called him up and bought it. And we have a lot of friends who are policemen and they donated their, they, they, yeah, they just gave it to him and he put them with mannequins. As I promised you, 
what a tour. Thank you, Pat. And uh, <laughs> have you ever seen anything like that in your entire life? I know that, that uh, there's a um, cable channel where those guys are called the Pickers. Uh, if they ever found this place, they'd be probably passing out. Um, thanks again. I mean, it, every time I come here, and I know there's some of you who have been here, uh, it's not open to the public. Uh, this is a private collection. Um, it's very special, and we're very proud to have been able to uh, share it with you today. And even prouder to uh, have met Jim and Pat. And uh, we thank you for watching and um, well, enjoy the new year. Anything special you'd like to say to the folks? Well, I just want to say that I had 55 guys from Michigan last year come down. And then I had some from Philadelphia, and they drove their cars here, their old cars here. And I've had a lot of people from Minnesota and Wisconsin come down. Yeah, you've had a lot of visitors. I know that there's... Uh, uh, elected officials have been down here, council people have been down here, state people have been down here. I had the state police down here. I had the city of Joliet. I had 22 policemen come down there in the city of Joliet. And uh, they all seemed to like it, so. Yeah. Well, how could they not like and it, it? And it's free. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> and it's free. Yeah. All I do is yeah, take my time up, but I, I don't mind that. Yeah. Now, do you remember that guy's name you mentioned earlier about the, the fellow who brought you the Model T? Art Di Lorenzo. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, Art. And uh, Art's still uh, with us. He was at the um, uh, veterans ceremony uh, a couple of weeks ago. You were there. Were you with that there? I was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you are a veteran. We thank you for your service. Four we thank years. Four years. Four years. Two and a half Air years. Force? Air Force. Yeah. Two and a half years in North Africa on the desert. Was that an enjoyable time? I liked it. I like hot weather. <laughs> in the morning, I'd get up, it was 123. By 2 o'clock, it was 147. And when I came home at night, my dad went in, didn't want to let me in the house. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, we could continue with this. This guy's got stories forever. Um, I've had the privilege of listening to some of those stories. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our production, our special here for you. And uh, this has been another Profile Special on JCTV Channel 6. I'm Richard Fredrickson. We'll see you next time.